私の名を呼んでいるわ Hey guys, I hope you guys like that intro. It's Ander here with my first ever Genshin Impact Guide. I've been playing this game for an absolute ton in the past week's release, and now I'm sitting at, let's see, Adventure Rank 29. So in this video, I'll be sharing some team building tips that I've encountered as I've been playing through this game, and with that being said, let's get straight into it. Now the first thing that I'd like to take a look at is that there's a small detail that most people miss that is actually quite substantial, and that is that some characters actually scale with a certain stat, meaning that you should really be trying to build that character with that particular stat. What do I mean by this? Well, when you go to talents of certain people and then click on one of their talents, in the description sometimes it will mention that their abilities will scale with a particular stat. For instance, Chi Chi over here, her healing scales based onto her attack. This means that in order to make an ideal Chi Chi build, you should be focusing mostly on attack stuff. For instance, like this thing right here that gives much more attack percent. This will go and allow her to heal more. And some other examples of this is Barbara. If you go to her talents, you will see that her skill scales with her max HP. So. In essence, you should go and put some HP gears on instead, such as this goblet that gives nice percent HP, this cap that also does, and I just haven't found any other HP gears so far, so this hourglass will have to wait. Also, one more example is Noelle, who I can find right here. Noelle is actually pretty interesting because her thing scales with her defense, and it's actually really nice because the amount of HP regenerated from the skill is based on her defense, as well as her attack from her ultimate, which is scaling with her defense too. So you should be trying to build Noelle with as much defense as possible, Barbara with as much HP as possible, and Chi Chi with as much attack as possible. Another common feature a lot of people miss is the refining feature for weapons. Now through this process, you can enhance these skills on your weapons by feeding extra copies of that weapon, increasing its damage or percentages. Take for example the Black Tassel. At refinement level 1, it only does 40% extra damage against slimes, but at maximum refinement level, as you can see in the top left, at 5, it does a massive 80% more damage against slimes. So this is why some blue weapons are really good, because you can get a ton of duplicates right here, and you can use those duplicates to go and refine much faster than purple weapons because you will not find as many purple duplicates nearly as fast. So in some scenarios this actually makes some blue weapons better than purple weapons. Take for example in this practical scenario, Chi Chi over here, I'm using the cool steel blue sword because it gives a nice 24% extra damage at refinement rank 5 compared to the prototype Rancor which at maximum stacks 4 times 4 is 16%, which is less than the Cool Steel's 24%. Along with that, the Cool Steel is just a better weapon for Chi Chi because it gives a really nice 22.8% extra attack too, which as I said earlier, Chi Chi needs as much attack as possible because her healing scales with her attack, compared to the prototype Rancor, which gives no extra percent attack. So this is why the Cool Steel Blue weapon, although it is a lower rarity, actually turns out to be a better choice for Chi Chi. The next part that I'd like to talk about is Elemental Resonance Team Bonuses. Now this feature means that if you have two of the same element members on the same team, you will get an additional bonus. You can find this tab on the top right called Elemental Resonance. Over here, you will find that having two of the same type of members on your team, for instance two Pyros, will get you an additional bonus. For instance, this would be Fervent Flames. And the best two elemental team bonuses you can get from here are going to be pyro and electro bonuses. 
Pyro is really good because you get affected by Cryo for 40% less time, but the really important part is that it gives a massive 25% extra attack to all party members here, as long as you have two or more Pyro members on your team. Some great picks for activating this buff would be Diluc, who is the 5 star, and then Xiangling is also really good. And if you're missing one of the other people, you can always use Amber to fill in that second requirement. The other elemental resonance you should be really looking out for is Electric, because Electro is a fantastic element where you can be affected by Hydro for 40% less time, but the really good part is that you can charge your ultimates much faster. This is because Superconduct, Overloaded, and Electrocharged now have a 100% chance to generate an Electro Elemental Particle. This may sound like complete gibberish, but if you were to break it down, Superconduct, which is the elemental effect when you combine Ice and Electro, Overloaded, which is Fire and Electro, and Electrocharged, which is Hydro and Electro, anytime those elemental reactions occur, you will now get a 100% chance to generate another ultimate orb, which you can use to charge your ultimate. So this allows you to charge your ultimates much faster, and with this you will be able to activate your ultimates a lot more frequently. For this team bonus, I would recommend Qixing, the 5 star, Razor, and of course, Fischl. Now you may be wondering, where is Lisa? Well, sadly, Lisa, our Ara Ara Onesan, is much weaker compared to the other Electro options, and her ability takes forever to charge up, and during that time, she will probably die. Due to this, I can't recommend her, but keep in mind, she is everybody's number one waifu, especially when rock climbing. Speaking of all those elemental reactions that I talked about in the Electro Elemental Resonance, let's talk about elemental synergies. So, as you can see by this chart that should appear right now, there is a ton of elemental reactions. And as you can see by the massive chart on the right, this is why Fischl is rated so high, because Electro is definitely the best element to combo out there. It combines with multiple elements, and offers the most powerful debuffs. With Fischl, her bird Oz will provide consistent Electro damage, allowing for massive combo potential, as you saw in the introduction. In particular, Superconduct, which is going to be Electro and Ice, is the one that you are looking out for. You can activate this debuff by combining the Electro debuff with a Cryo debuff. Not only does it deal Cryo AoE damage, but it also lowers the defense of your opponent by a substantial 50%. Now, especially on harder stages, such as Abyss Floors, this is extremely valuable since it will allow you to cut through your enemies much easier. Ideally, you will want to have at least one Electro unit on your team to activate all of these debuffs. Along with this, I would recommend bringing some Hydro, Pyro, or Cryo units as well to activate their respective debuffs as well. If you would like to see another video where I do a breakdown on team compositions, let me know in the comments. I would like to see how many people are interested. For the next topic, we're going to be talking about Elemental Mastery. If you go to your artifacts, you will find that sometimes it will say that this piece gives extra elemental mastery. You may also be wondering, what the heck is elemental mastery? Well, to answer your question, click the details page on your certain character right here, and then you will find elemental mastery and the description of it. To answer your question, Elemental Mastery basically enhances the amount of damage that you do with certain elemental reactions, or if your character is a Geotype, it enhances the amount of shielding that you receive. Generally, try to prioritize getting more attack over Elemental Mastery, as it will be much more beneficial for you earlier in the game. Next up, let's talk about Artifacts. Now, unlike weapons, where due to that refinement feature, can sometimes be better than purples, purple artifacts are always going to be better than blue artifacts. This is why you should be trying to use as many purple artifacts as you can, because they offer much more stats. Take for example, this purple Exiles Pocket Watch gives 7.9% defense, compared to the blue rarity version, which only gives 6.6%. So purple artifacts will always give much more stats, 
So you try and use as many purple artifacts as possible. Now also for upgrading purposes, you should also only try to upgrade your purple artifacts as well, because as again, you will be missing out on a lot of stats if you decide to upgrade your blue artifacts. If you did already upgrade your blue artifacts, don't worry too much, because most of the experience will be carried over if you decide to use an enhanced blue to go and feed another artifact. One last feature that I'd like to talk about is to upgrade your talents. Now some of you might not even know that you could upgrade your talents because it's a little bit hidden, but once your character reaches Ascension rank 2, or if you don't know when that is, that's when your character hits the level 50 cap, you will be able to upgrade your talents, well these top three ones right here, by clicking them and then clicking level up. From here, you will get a substantial damage, shielding, or healing increase depending on the skill, so make sure that you are doing this because it's a pretty substantial increase. With that last tip finished, that will conclude my Genshin Impact team building tips video. Tell me in the comments what topics you would like to see in the future. As always, if you found this information helpful, consider dropping a like and subscribing. Don't forget to press that notification bell for my future uploads as well. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any other questions that need to be answered, and I'll try my best to reply. That'll be all for this video, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!